Welcome to the Austin Action Fest Podcast. We focus on filmmaking from idea to distribution and everything in between. We focus on you getting your project in the can and for the world to see. Thank you for listening to the Austin Action Fest Podcast. Now let's get cracking. Hey everyone, Erica Reddick here with the Stay A While podcast for Austin Action Fest. Hey Very excited to have CJ Julianis here with me today. We're at the Austin Action Fest. I'm not pointing my microphone in the correct direction, so I'm getting It, it should be like pointed at your mouth, just so me. you know. Ah! <laughs> the sound person's gonna love me in post for that one. CJ Julianis is here with us uh, hey, to everybody. talk about uh, the misadventures of Mistress Maneater. Yes, yes. So that's my feature film. I'm the director and producer and executive producer of. Uh, I did it with my wife, Larissa Julianis. And she's the star. She is the star. She's the star. She, she wrote the script. She's the man eater. She is the man eater. Um, she also supervised all the music. That's all original music oh, uh, in the film. That's cool. And. Uh, we're really thrilled with it. It's up to eight and a half million minutes streamed on Prime right now. Oh wow! So we're super excited to have you here, uh, Mistress. The Misadventures of Mistress Man Eater. That's it. You're also going to be doing a panel discussion. Yes. It's like kind of like warnings, what to do, not to do. Well, what, what's warnings, your panel going to be focused on? Not necessarily warnings, but there, are, as an independent filmmaker, it is a really hard road to walk. Yeah. Um, there's numerous challenges that we all face, uh, and it's not just money. Yeah. Uh, money is obviously one of the biggest bugaboos when you're making a movie. You have to have it. Yeah. But there's other things that happen that we are we were not prepared for. So mm. um, I'm going to discuss all of the various pitfalls that uh, filmmakers can face. Yeah. And how to overcome them. How to overcome them. That's good. See, yeah. because that's the thing is it's easy to just say here are the problems. It's, we have to be solution oriented we do. To, to move forward. We and do. sometimes that takes a lot of creativity yes. and um, resilience, determination. So making a movie, so for all you filmmakers out there, have you ever heard of the old Greek, uh, the Greek story of Sisyphus? Oh, rolling the boulder Pushing uphill. Pushing the boulder up the hill. And then every time you get close to the apex, it rolls back to the bottom and you got to start all start over. over making a movie you feel like sisyphus every single day yeah because there's always a new challenge some challenges are bigger than others but you always have to overcome those challenges and keep things going well and here's the thing it that i love that you've said that because i think people think a lot of times that if they're pursuing their passion that if they're pursuing their dreams that it's just going to be like cakewalk right like oh i'm I'm in my purpose. I'm living my God-given purpose, right? And so if you're if you're in that, if you're going after that thing, people think it's like going to be easy or like great mm -hmm. and all the time and just a piece of cake. And what I've learned is you have to want that thing so bad that you are willing to Do deal with all everything of it takes. Blood sweat, literally blood sweat and tears. Yeah. So passion is irreplaceable. You have to have it. However, at the same time, you have to have that passion tempered by reality. Yeah. And what really has to happen. And uh, when we when we were when we were faced with the real realities, yeah. it felt like getting smacked in the face yeah. by Mike Tyson. Yeah. When we when we realized some of the things that we're having to deal what with. What is it? Isn't that a isn't that a Mike Tyson quote? Everyone has a plan until, until you get, get punched, punched in, in the face. face. I think exactly that's an true. actual quote. So when I was in the military, our, our the things we said was improvise, adapt, and overcome, which is great for movie making. Oh, right? yep. And then there's the seven P principle. Has anybody ever have you heard of the seven P principle? I don't know what that is. Proper pre planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> so movie making is nothing but planning, right? Yes. You've got to do it. Uh, you've yes. got to have a. You've got to have a plan. You've got to have a shot list. You've got to have a, all of your 
I's dotted and your T's crossed and you need to be ready to go every yes. day on the set. And uh, you're going you're gonna to face things that, you, that are the great unknown every day. Yeah. But the more that you can eliminate the great unknowns and get the known knowns in there, the better off you're going to be. So what you need, you artists out there, because I'm, so I'm an accountant by trade. And I'm in the finance business by trade. So see, we're artists, but we've got that business acumen. Right. If you are an artist and you do not have business acumen, get you some friends or a partner that is willing to do the details with you, is willing to do the administrative stuff yes. for you, because that's what you're talking about. It's the unsexy stuff that nobody wants to do, making sure logistics are taken care yeah. of and locations are right. put in place and all, and contracts are done. All of those things. Yeah. So short. So it, what's interesting is that short films marketability is limited. Mm, yes. People are not going to go to movie theaters to see short films. However, for filmmakers, short films are a great way for you to hone your craft, mm, to assemble yes. your team. Yep. Find the people that you trust that you want to work with on an ongoing basis, and then the other thing with short films is. You're going to find out the people that you don't want to work with yes. in the future, which is sometimes more important than knowing who you do want to work with. Because if you let a cancer in the clubhouse, it can screw up your whole oh your my whole gosh. movie yeah. shoot. We we just had uh, we just shot a, a proof of concept. It's a short film basically, and it was not good conditions outside in the Texas heat in the middle of the summer. Everybody's got you know layers of armor and costumes on. And I can tell you, I will work with every single one of those people again. They all had smiles on their faces. They had good attitudes. Everyone was hot and uncomfortable. There was no point in complaining. And every they just powered through it. Right. Our stunt guys were eating dirt. Everybody was just doing their job. And it was and so it was like, okay, this camera guy is good. This photographer is good. This actress was bleeding and she still was smiling you know you learn that stuff absolutely and it, that is good advice so you really really advice. the biggest filmmakers out there scorsese clint eastwood uh steven soderbergh um all of those filmmakers if you look at the credits of their movies it's always the same people mm. behind the camera because they've worked with them on an ongoing basis forever yep and a lot of times they use the same actors over and over yep. again i can Clint Eastwood has an actor that he uses all the time. It's an African-American actor. Uh, if anybody's seen Dirty Harry, he's the guy oh, yeah. at the beginning who's like, man, I gots to know <laughs> how many bullets are left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's been in many of Clint Eastwood's movies. Yeah. Because you just know who you want to work with. They're going to make life on the set easy. Set life is hard enough. Yes. So you want to have people around you that can help and accentuate what your vision is instead of making it oh, worse. Oh, that is so true. That is such good yeah. advice. And and it's the double-edged sword, right? So you end up putting together your team. Mm -hmm. You have these people you trust, so you use them over and over again. And a lot of people get frustrated that it's hard to break into Hollywood. It's hard to break into movies because everyone wants to work with people they already know. But there's a reason for it, and it's what we were just talking about. Exactly. You want to make sure that it's good people. So. I think that is really smart advice. Make sure that you're out there building your team, finding people that you trust, cultivating those relationships. Yes. This is a relationship business, period. Period. Yes. If you don't have good relationships with your professional people, if you can't establish strong relationships with your cast, literally the biggest thing as a director, and I am a director and I have an extensive theater background mm. of directing stage plays, yeah. having a relationship with your cast literally will translate into better performances that are that you capture on on film or I on bet. tape or on not tape anymore on your hard drive yeah so you, you've got to have that what is it that's how hard is it i get i see i'm I, i'm i have a hard time directing because i have a hard time if people are being like divas or emotional or dramatic how hard is it to like be calm in the midst of all the art artists being being their artsy self. So don't get mad. You guys <laughs> don't get to get mad for calling you out. You know who I'm talking about. You're drama queens. It's called drama. So let's 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 be very clear. Actors are dramatic. They are. Right? So they are. it's their job it's literally to be dramatic. So here's how I do it. Um, so when I was in the military, I was always okay. a leader. Yeah. Um, I always had my own platoon. I always had that. My wife and I 
we own our production company. Oh, and that's good. And we decided that's at the smart. onset that we were going to set the tone at the top. So we decided early on there would be no drama coming from Larissa or I. Ah, there would be that's no temper important. tantrums. There would be no yelling. Yep. Everything would be ultra professional. Yep. And that, and nobody would work harder than us. That's mm. the other thing. When your cast and your crew sees that your director and your EP and your producer are working harder than everybody, they're the first person on set, they're the last people to leave, and they're making sure that everything is taken care of, that everybody has what they need, yep. craft services are ready. It just, mm -hmm. there's a million things. Yep. When people see that and you set the tone strongly at the top, yep. people tend to fall into line. Now, another thing I discovered is when you're getting your cast together, mm -hmm. hire slow, mm. fire fast. Oh. Hire slow, fire fast. If somebody gives you, if you hire slow, you're going to be doing your due diligence on people. You're going to yeah. find out what they're like. Okay. But if you find out somebody really is not who they said they were and they're a, they're a, a detriment or an anchor around your ankle on the film set. Yeah. Replace Let him go. Replace him. Let him go. Because that's, what did you say, a cancer? How did you Cancer say? in the clubhouse. Cancer in the clubhouse. You don't want that. You don't want that. One do bad apple that. ruins the whole bunch. These are, I mean, these are all old How many sayings. cliches can we come yeah, up with? Yeah, right, exactly. Uh, but no, but seriously, but you're, it really is true. And, and I you're think. You're building a team. And Benjamin says uh, all the time, be the thermostat, not the thermometer. Right. Right? So do you guys get that? Be the thermostat, not the thermometer. So there's Set a lot the, of cliches we can throw out like, there. Like, I love it. <laughs> I love it. So this has been really great, CJ. Thank you so much for taking a few minutes before we scream. Give me some fists, baby. Okay, fists. Boom. I love it. I love it. Want to do a thumb oh. war? This, is, this okay. is like... Okay, one, this, two, two, three, four. four. Let's I declare have a, a thumb, thumb war. war. Oh, wait. Your thumb is huge. Wait. Oh, my God. I have tiny little... Look at you. have big man hands. Oh, wait. No. Oh, ah! There's some oh. action for you, folks. <laughs> Come on out to the Austin Action Fest. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>